Welcome back. In the last lesson, we took a look at what we want to be building in terms of the front end. In this lesson, we're going to get straight into it. And so just make sure you've got Visual Studio Code open. You've got a terminal and I've now introduced a, a new window here for a browser because we want to be able to see our web application that we're writing. As we're writing the code, we want to see what we're getting. So if we take a look at Visual Studio Code, we've been working in this server folder for most of this course. And now we're going to start working on the front end side. Let's introduce a new folder here. So in the root of this project, we can click on new folder and we can just create the, a, a, a folder here called front end. And to get started, let's just create a new file in there and let's call it index.html. And this index.html file is going to act as the entry point into our application. And to get started, we can just write out some boilerplate HTML here. If using Visual Studio Code, there's this extension called Emmet, which we can make use of. If you type out the exclamation point and hit tab, it's just going to scaffold out some basic HTML that we can make use of. Uh, we can remove this document here and we can just rename this something more relevant. We can call this auth app. And in the body, let's just go ahead and write out this heading tag. We'll just call this auth application. Before we start writing out any more of our HTML on our front end side here, I think it'll be quite useful to have some way to hot reload our front end code, meaning that in the same way that we've used Nodebun on the back end, whenever we make changes in our files, Nodebun was watching for any of those changes and then restarting our Express application so we didn't have to keep running the application over and over again to see the changes that we've made. We can use a similar strategy on the front end to kind of see our changes in real time. We're not going to be using Nodemon or Node for that. There's another workaround that we can use. There's a very cool NPM package called Live Server. And if you read the description here, exactly what it says, it's a little development server with live reload capability and you can use it to hack your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files. And that is exactly what we're gonna be doing. So this is a very good fit for us. So if you take a, a look at the, the documentation, uh, there's the command here to install this using npm. You can go ahead and install this on your computer. It's npm install dash g. Just make sure you do include that dash g. That's gonna install a live server globally on your, your computer. And so just follow the instructions, install that globally. And if you take a look at the rest of the documentation, there's a whole a lot of options that you can use with a live server. We're not going to be using all of them for now. In late in the course, we will make use of it. But we can just leverage the, the very basic live server command, maybe with one option here. And so yeah, just take a, take a look at the documentation. It's really cool. The whole idea with live server is you can just type this command called live server at the root of your front end project, and it's going to open up a local host port for us and be able to render our application. So if we head on back to our terminal, we've had our terminal open here at the root of our server project. If you open up a new tab and navigate to the root of our, our actual project, you can do ls now and we've got that front end folder. We can now navigate to that folder. And if we do ls, we can see this index.html file. Assuming that you've run this command, You've installed live server, you've gone ahead, hit enter, and it's and it's installed globally for you. I already have this installed, so I'm not gonna rerun the command. But what we're gonna do now is just see how this works. So at the root of your front end folder where that index.html file lives, you can just run the live, uh, live server command, just live-server, and you can hit enter. And then you'll see, we get some output here. It says it's serving this front end folder here at HTTP 127.00.800. Okay, so we've got this up and running. If you've run that live server command in the root of front end, it should open up onto this address in the browser and you'll be able to see your front end application. You can see our heading tag over here, as well as the title auth app up in the, the browser tab there. So that's all looking good. I'm just going to kill live server with control C. And I do want to make use of one option or flag that we can insert into the command. So if we say live server dash dash host, and then we can say equal to localhost, and then I'm going to hit enter. And then you'll see that instead of the, the 127 or dot zero dot zero dot one, now we've got this localhost port here. And I'm just trying to line this up to our API, which is going to be useful down when we or when we start working with our API. Okay, and I said we'll just use one, but I think let's just do one more change to our live server here. 
So if you kill the server or hit the up key on, on your keyboard just to get the last command, we have that live dash server dash dash host equals localhost. Let's pass in one more flag and what we want to do is change the port from 8080 uh, to, to 9000. And so we can pass that in with dash dash port equals 9000. If I hit enter here, it's now serving our application on the, the host and the port that we want it to be on specifically. Now that we have live server up and running, let's just test that it is in fact hot reloading our work here. So let's just change the, the, the heading here. We'll say uh, Node.js passport application. And you'll see as I hit save, the, the changes has been have been reflected in our browser almost instantly. And this is going to make our development experience way, way, way more efficient and enjoyable. And so just one last change we'll say, we'll just call this Node.js passport auth app. We hit save and that's all looking good. Now that we have set up our development environment for our front end code, let's take a short, quick break here and we'll continue building out our, our index or our root of our application. In the next lesson, we'll add some basic HTML and CSS. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.